In some ways, an ordinary magnet like this bar magnet is a mysterious thing. Uh, if we take the magnet here and put it on the overhead projector so that uh, you can see it, and then uh, let me put a cover over it like that. And let me take some iron filings um, from the floor of the, of the machine shop and uh, scatter them over to this uh, piece of plastic uh, above the bar magnet. When you do that, you see an interesting thing. You see that there's a pattern. The iron filings in some way are responding to an influence exerted by that bar magnet into the space around it. And that's a mysterious thing. How does this, this piece of metal influence the space around it? Well, we call that uh, region of influence a magnetic field. And these uh, iron filings, little pieces of iron, uh, line up to form a pattern, a pattern in this space. And you can see that the pattern kind of concentrates down here in uh, one area. And then uh, you can follow kind of lines of, uh, of this field up here. And then they concentrate again at the top. And if you work the other way around, concentration, then they kind of spread out and are concentrated again. We call these regions of concentration the poles of the magnet. Now, there's a better way of, of uh, seeing, perhaps, the, uh, the shape of this uh, magnetic field, uh, which I'll show you here in a moment. But you can see that there's kind of a lobed structure to it. You've got the poles at each end, and then the magnetic field lines come out of one end and into the other, out of one end and into the other, a kind of lobed structure. So remember that for just a moment, and let me take the uh, iron filings and uh, put them away and show you another way to map this magnetic field map these lines that seem to be lines of influence of the magnetic field. Now here's another way to, to map this uh, magnetic field that we saw outlined by the iron filings. Um, let me put the bar magnet back in place, a little cover over there, but this time I'll use a little compass that uh, we got from the Boy Scouts of America and uh, put this uh, compass into the magnetic field, this, this region of influence. And you'll see that if you uh, move the compass, that it, uh, the uh, direction that it points follows those same lines that were being outlined by the iron filings. If you go over on the other side, same thing. It kind of uh, shows the line coming out of one of the poles, and then you kind of follow it along and see it disappear into the other pole at the other end. We can do that again start at one end, and then you see the line kind of coming out and then pointing back into the pole at the other end of the bar magnet. So in, uh, if we uh, then use the compass throughout the space surrounding the bar magnet, we'd again outline, perhaps here in more detail, this lobe structure, this magnetic field, which seems to concentrate in the poles uh, of the magnet, starting at one end and coming out and uh, disappearing into the other, but this doing this in three dimensions, not only in the two dimensions outlined here, but if you went all the way around the magnet, this uh, same pattern would be there in three dimensions. Now there's another way uh, to uh, create the same kind of lobed structure, this magnetic field, but doing it in a way that doesn't involve a bar magnet at all. So let me take this away and show you another way to create that same kind of magnetic field, that same kind of lobed pattern, but in a completely different way. Here's another way to produce uh, a magnetic field that doesn't involve a bar magnet at all. I still have my, uh, my plastic cover, but this time I have run a, uh, a wire uh, up from the bottom up through the uh, plastic cover and then back like this. And in a moment, I'm going to cause an electric current to flow through this wire. So you imagine the electric current coming up vertically up through the bottom of this uh, uh, plate, coming up like this, and then uh, completing the circuit. So if I put this uh, back on our overhead projector so that we can see it, and uh, for a moment, let me uh, just take a compass and put it in the vicinity of this wire. 
And now I'm going to turn on the current and uh, cause the current to come up uh, through the wire, rising vertically. And uh, when I do that, you can see that suddenly there is a uh, region of influence again, a magnetic field that has been created in the vicinity of this flowing current in the wire. If I uh, turn it on again and try to map that uh, field, you'll see that the field uh, seems to go around the, uh, the wire so that I'm creating a magnetic field, which I'm using the compass now to map the field. The current comes up through the wire like that. The magnetic field lines that you could also map with iron filings tend to go around the current carrying wire. Now that means that there are two ways that you could create this lobed pattern that we saw surrounding the bar magnet. You could, instead of using a bar magnet, create a, a little loop, a little loop like that, a current carrying loop. And if you uh, then looked at the magnetic field lines, they would uh, surround the loop. And in three dimensions, you'd see the same kind of lobed pattern that we saw coming out of the bar magnet. Same kind of lobed pattern. Now, the importance of that for our purposes is that the Earth has a magnetic field. And the magnetic field of the Earth is a lobed pattern very much similar to the one that we saw around the bar magnet and also around the loop of wire. And so the question naturally comes up, how is this magnetic field of the Earth being created? Is there a bar magnet somewhere down in the center of the Earth? Or is there some kind of a mechanism down there in which there is a flow of electric current that is generating the magnetic field? As we try to resolve that puzzle and try to figure out how the Earth's magnetic field could originate, we will learn something about the interior of the Earth.